Nick, welcome to the show, my man. How you doing? Doing great, Colton. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Um, so here's what I need from you. In 90 seconds or less, I need you to share with these guys that are watching how you started and where you're at today because you were a former airplane pilot now selling 400 houses a year. So, dude, where did you come from and how did you get here? Oh, man. Kind of a long journey that um, looking back on this, like, seems like it was 90 seconds ago. I mean, and I was an airline pilot, but by no means am I special. You know, I grew up in a small town, you know, low income family, uh, went to a college, nobody special, right? Became a pilot, lost my job, got into real estate in 2008, right? Right before the crash. I sold one home my first year. I think I made $6,000. You know, and by the time I made that commission check, I think I had $300 left to my name. So thank God that sale went through. And I know a lot of people can relate to that struggle and just grew from there. Solo agent, one home. Then I sold 12 homes, hustling expireds, REOs. I actually did BPOs, broker price opinions for $35 a piece just to get gas in the tank. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a great way to like, get into the businesses, do the stuff that people aren't willing to do. So sold 13 homes, then 32, then 64. Once I sold 64 homes, I said, let's, let's build a team. So I built a team in a new marketplace. We sold 101, then 200, then 250, then 350, then 400. So like 90 seconds, that's the progression. As you, if, if you could take a graph and put a graph together, been real fortunate with that growth, been happy with it, but it hasn't come without a lot of mistakes and struggle for sure. Totally get that. So I noticed Thomas Tadlock, he's a friend and mentor of mine. I just want to give him a shout out, smoothieshred.com, because this is what helped me get my health and vitality, and I'm drinking my smoothie every day. So saw him on there. So Nick, you got into real estate 2008. You lost your job. Does that mean you were fired from the airlines, or what happened? Or they were yeah, kind of I downsizing? Be, be, Maybe <laughs> fired's a little rough, but like, what happened, man? How did you lose your job? Uh, the the airline shut down. So that's funny that you said that because I got to be clear. Yeah, the airline shut down and my wife didn't want to leave Wenatchee. I live in this small town, 50,000 people in Washington State. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to leave. So I had to make a tough decision, find a new career, right? So stuck around because of my beautiful wife. And so here we are. Yeah, yeah, women will do I that. They'll talk you. I could have kept flying. So. You could have kept yeah. flying, but women talk you into staying because you really love that. Women do that to us. They, they yeah. convince us to do things. So you got in 2008. Uh, you sold one house, and then from there you did 12. Where were you generating your business? So from that progression, how many well, – let's do this first. From 2008 yeah. to when you sold 64 homes, how many years was that to when you got 64 homes a year? Four years. Four, Four years. years. So each year it kind of progressed. Four, yeah, that was my fourth year. Okay. So, so, yeah. so when you hit 12 homes, that was your second year. Where did you, where did those 12 transactions come from? They came from listings, probably 50, 50, right? So I doubled in a couple of them. I, um, was going after expires and FISBOs. Great way to start. I mean, a lot of stories start with this. A lot of people are scared to do it, but FISBOs expired because nothing was selling. Um, I was just, I had a, I think it was like year two or three, I had a, a theory that I couldn't say no, right? So this is kind of a mindset thing. Mm -hmm. um, agents were lazy. Uh, and you know what, you know what, it doesn't, that still holds true today for the most part, right? Yep. Like we're complacent, we're all human. And so yep. I didn't want to have this, make the same mistake. So I had a theory that I would never say no. And I did this for like two years. So if I, it was a land deal for $5,000, I'm doing it. If it's an expired with that is overpriced, I'm going on the appointment. I'm doing everything. I can't say no. And I went from 12 to inventory, your listing inventory. Um, online marketing was just taken off, right? So I'd get up at 5 a.m. and I'd do Craigslist ads until 7, right? Yeah. And, you yeah. know, Craigslist ads still work, right? And it's just... I think it's this principle of lead generating that I did it in the morning, five to seven or six to eight and direct response. So that was kind of a key to success too. Colton there is like do the marketing and then make it direct response, right? Go here, do this, click here, call me like relentless because I was an airline pilot that was scared to talk on the radio and how I'm supposed to sell homes over the phone. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> so I, I was like, okay, well, let me do this online. And I was super aggressive online direct response. Yeah. And that allowed me to transition to be super aggressive on the phone, right? And that's where that progression went from. Where it went from like, okay, I'm going to do it online and see how I can convert without calling people to the point of year three, I sold 32 and I said, aha, I'm a salesperson and I need to be really good on the phone, like exceptionally good on the phone. Like I'm lead generating like crazy. So now let me figure out how I convert at a higher level. Leads yep. on the problem, conversion is the problem. And so then I just dove into like every sales book, every psychology book, every, you know, human behavior book possible. And I uh, got really good on the phone and got really good in person. And that's where I went from 32 to 64. And that's, that's really a prospecting system, right? Everyone thinks that there's some magic thing to prospecting. There isn't. It's like a step-by-step -step system. It's a context. Like how do I, I call it the rules of engagement. How do I open the conversation? How do I stay in rapport, go through the flow of harmony, affirm and appreciate them, validate them, and get their motivation to where I can drive and close for an appointment. And it, it, there's, just like, there's just a system behind it. So you've learned that system. And it sounds like it took you from 32 deals, to, uh, it's 32 to 64 deals in one year. Is that, is that what you're saying? That's r pretty much. And plus not saying no to anything. So um, how did you, judging. wait, 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 before you start to say no, how much time did you put in to study in that skill set? How much time? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Thousands of hours. Like thousands. let's, let's break it down to a day. Like what would you say per day you were, you were focused on mastering the skill set? Oh, on the skill set. So it was a lot of uh, on the job training, but I would say three, four hours. If I, if I wasn't reading or listening, I was doing uh, mm -hmm. working on my skills three to four hours a day. And I still do that today, right? Like, you know, you, you got that plug for health and wellness, that smoothie. Yep. I got to get some of that, right? Yeah. Like I work on my body and my, my body mainly in the morning now instead of lead mm -hmm. generating because I got systems in place. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So I'm like, I'm sharpening my physical body now and that's way down the line. So I work out 10, 12 hours a week now, right? Yeah. Uh, high intensity just to sharpen my mind, but it goes back to working on the skills to build that. So zero, I tell my agents that I train zero to 50, all skill. And you were talking about your levels. I love it. Right. Zero to 50, all skill. You need to be working right. on that. Don't yeah, worry about get... leverage. You, you have capacity now. You have time yeah. now. You totally. have to optimize yourself. Exactly. So when that's the level three agent, it's about, I say about 45 deals a year, depending on where they're at, $250,000 in revenue. Um, yeah. and, and when you hit that point, that's when you start to really then I need to focus on leverage. I need to, I built these systems, but now I need to document them and I need to be able to make it teachable with someone else so that I can bring in someone else to do the transaction coordination, to do the assistance stuff, to put that, whatever the stuff is that keeps you from doing what you're great at, which is really I believe everyone should focus on one thing, setting five or more appointments a week, mastering your skill set, and building your network. You focus on those three things and you will grow your business and make a lot of money. But you get people get distracted, Nick, with how do I do the right website or what should my Facebook profile look like or all this crap, right? Oh, yeah. how, how do you stay so focused in those first three levels where you're not doing quite 50 deals a year yet and maybe you're doing 15 deals? How do you stay so focused and not get distracted by all the noise out there right now? Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm looking at my desk right now. I got to find it for you. But, you know, I have reminders of my, my coming. Like I have a list. I'll find it. And it's really talking about shiny objects and websites. I wasn't, I, you know, I did have a website and I lead generated, but I, my CRM was a piece of paper, right? That I would write people's name, number, and email down. And I would update it every day. Sheet. It does doesn't have to be the most fancy CRM in the world. Now, you know, I'm part owner of a CRM company and I, I believe in technology, but I'm telling you like to start out what I tell my agents and I, and this is based on experience and myself is if you just keep track of everyone you've ever met, right? If I could go back and have a list of everyone I, I made contact with, it's a freaking gold mine, absolute mm -hmm. gold mine. And I have this list from 2011 has 200 people on it. I know every single person on that, that list. I take it everywhere I went, right? Everywhere I went, I had this list and I would call it. I made so many phone calls in the car 
before they changed the law with like the, the hands-free law. And mm -hmm. I was on the phone nonstop in my car. That's where I prospect because I was always on the road. So, you know, I don't know how we got to this point, but you know, those, those are the keys to success is having your contacts in there and being relentless in that follow-up pursuit. Because I was in a second home market where people don't have to buy. It's discretionary. So it's all about reaching out to them nonstop. And I don't, you know, it sounds basic, like you've heard this before, but you have to understand it. it you need to be, I need to repeat myself and I have to repeat myself to, for one, for me, two, for my agents is like, keep track of those people you met with and follow up with them forever. Right. Well, that's how it scientifically works with this. And our unconscious mind and our nervous system is repetition, build that neural pathway, strengthens over time. Whatever we repeat, we will literally, our historical events will predict the future, right? So if yeah. repetitively we're not building that skill set or we're not building that network or we're not tracking these people and staying in touch with them, then we're going to actually build a habit of just not doing it. And that's what we create our future with. So um, you, you said something really, really cool, which is, track these people, you have that 200 list. When I first started, I had a recipe box, right? Like, so one through 31 with three by five cards and I'd put their name on yeah. it and write on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and I just grew up from there. And you know, it's funny, I didn't get it at the time, but technology has actually made it even more focused on this of building your network because it used to be the same. You remember this? It's it's not uh, what you know, but who you know. You ever heard that saying before? Yeah, sure. Right. It's and yeah. I think it's it's brilliant for the 90s, but we live in a whole new world where it's no longer who you know, it's who knows you. So if you've got this network of people that know who you are and what you do and what message you stand for, they're going to naturally attract to you and they're going to trust you and they're going to do business with you. What you're saying is technology today just helps it easier for you to stay in front of these people over and over again and to be able to connect with them. Is that, is that fair enough? Yeah. So the technology allows us to capture their information so it's stored, but it doesn't necessarily, like to your point, know who you are and that has to come through the human experience right mm -hmm. over the phone in person through that follow-up right and i don't think it, it hasn't quite replaced the human experience right so and sometimes that's a crutch right like so it's stored so we think they're ours or right. we think that we're nurturing right. that relationship or not and so that's why sometimes for me just having that like when i a comp like my computer or my phone holds all of my leads all of my right. contacts Right. But it's, it's also hidden from me. Right. I can't see it unless I open it up. So, so here, let, let me ask you this then, right? Because you, you have their information, but you got to stay in front of the people, right? Yes. What are the strategies you use to stay in front of the people? Well, number one, phone calls. Non, like you, you have to be able to engage with them. Number one, but you know, where we're going now in today's world. So we're, we're like fast forward is video social media media videos right right so social media connections and then giving them the experience of our life so like you know it's not who you know is what you know what would you say Sorry. not not who you know but who knows you right so it's not yeah, so they in order for them to know you you have to use the social media platform through video and storytelling and through ad copy so they can get to know you and that's a game changer when it comes to conversion on the phone and email, mm -hmm. like your email conversion rates will go through the roof once they start seeing your videos. I mean, we're, we're going, we went from 2011 to 2019 right there. Right. Right. So fast, yeah, very, yeah. very fast. So, yeah, really, so is, I, is it so weird? It's 2019. First of all, let's just take a second and pause. Yeah. At what point did we start living in the future? Like I, it's like, when did it shift that I'm literally living in the future? It blows my mind sometimes. It is really cool. So you, you remember Conan O'Brien's skit in the year 2000? You probably don't remember this. Mm -mm. Now you got to look that up. Okay. So anyways, I just referenced that. So, you know, that's how we're staying in touch is through. So it's a game changer. And you know this. I know already because you're all over it. Is, you know, we're seeing people now and they're like, we know you already. Yeah. Like. Yes, yep. I watched your market update video. I saw you with your family on the ski hill, right? Yep. The conversion process, like they're already sold because the number one reason I've lost business over the years and I've gone over you know, a couple thousand listing appointments, I lose business not to the top agents in town. I lose business to the, the agent that does one or four deals that's related to them, that goes to their church, that goes to their network. 
Right. You know, that's the that's your number one competitor in the marketplace. It's not the top dog. Yep. It's the long tail of agents that sell one or two homes. And because they're going to beat you out over rapport and trust. And so video, Facebook, that's going to, that's a game changer because you're going to show up and they're going to know you. Well, what's ridiculous now is like, for example, I can put my entire network because I've been following and keeping track of their data into Facebook and I can retarget these videos. Not only do I have to have it organically now, I can say, hey, Facebook, I'm going to give you some money, put it in front of these people over and over again, right? So then they think that you are this superstar. I show up at the taco stand, like no joke. Like, I'll go to the taco stand downtown. I'll have like three or four people say, hey, Colton, what's up? It's the WGR. I love you guys. And I was like, hey, how are you? I don't even, I don't really like, I don't know them because uh, I've never met them, right? For example, you guys watching, if you've ever met me, uh, put a yes. But if you've never met me, but you feel like you know me, drop a one down below. I'd love to see if you guys feel like you know me from the videos or not. Yeah, that, you nailed it. You know, you haven't met you, but you feel like you have. See, we can't tell the difference right now. And so after this, people are going to feel like they know Nick McClain. And, you know, we haven't met. I hope we do someday because I, I want to connect with everyone in, in your network and also meet you, Colton, someday, right? So that's going to be super cool. So um, that's where we're going. But we still go back to, you know, email's not dead. Phone call's definitely not dead. Face-to-face. Yep. -face, and that's how we stay in touch. So let's you discuss that. So you don't just use one avenue. It's just not like you put some Facebook videos up. I see all these ones popping up. And you know, it's funny because there's a people who put the yeses here. They met me only after they followed my videos. You follow me here? So they actually yeah. ended up meeting me in person, flew out to my event, yeah. something like that. So let's talk about that. What are, what are five strategies to make sure your network knows who you are? Say that again, because it went to pause. Five strategies that we can use so our network knows who we are. So you, you mentioned email, phone calls. What, what are five strategies and how can they use them? Yeah, so they know who you are. Well, you got, so Instagram, Facebook, you have to, so I break it up. So the social media rules of engagement for me, one would be content creation. So educational based content that's going to go out, right? So they know that what space I'm in, like I'm in the real estate industry space. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go human connection appreciation space. Are you following this? So yep. what's, experience what it's like at my office. Experience what it's like to be one of my agents. Experience what it's like to, to be part of my family on a ski trip, right? Experience what it's like to be fit and work out with me, right? Yep. And then appreciation would be appreciate my clients, like appreciate the results. That's like the social proof side of that thing. Yep. And then, you know, the other part is, you know, we're into recruiting and things like that. And so I won't go into that unless you're into recruiting. So then it's like, you know, educating the other brokers, you know, business building tips and things like that. Now, that's a that's an overall strategy. Now, some tactics would be follow up with that with a market update. So I might do a market update and tell them what's going on in the market, Facebook Live or other. And I then email that to my database, right? I can then text mass text message with a link to the Facebook page. I can then, like you said, I can go in and put a, a Facebook ad together and retarget. I can pixel my website retarget, right? And so we're, we're constantly putting value out there. And then every once in a while, oh, that's the third level. So it's like, it's like the content creation, the, the experience and appreciation. And the third one is a conversion. So then we'll throw some conversion ads out there or conversion th messages where it's like, you know, go here to search or go here, go here to look at homes, go here to get your value. You want to sell your house, right? But we probably will go 20%, maybe 10% will be a conversion type of ad, yep. right? And yep. you might have an evergreen going. So that's our overall strategy as far as, and, I mean, and we're starting to take more and more money away from Zillow and AdWords and doing throwing it into that space. And one of the things that's, that's really interesting is we look at online marketing, social media, particularly marketing, we're seeing more and more of the conversions happen through the engagement, right? So you've got the initial content, the video, look at me ski with my family, whatever, right? But then you get people start commenting or putting something on the video. Then you've got to go through and have someone that's responding to those messages, getting to like have that little bit of a quick conversation and that, that engagement, right? How are you guys dealing with the engagement side of it currently in, in, uh, in your business? 
Yeah, so I'm, I, ha I haven't delegated this task out. I've done it before many, many times, right? Like, you know, I have, I have six, six assistants or like staff members that I could do it, yep. but it's just not the same. So, you know, you got to engage with it. You know, one, one piece of advice I'll give you is when you start getting engagement on your posts, like you might get one that hit, like Facebook will just totally, if it sucks and there's no engagement, it's dead. Like mm -hmm. it's going nowhere. But yeah. when it hits, you know, it, it'll take off. You'll get like five, six, seven, ten comments. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, you know. And if you, paste, on... if you if you post something very controversial, you'll get a few hundred, just just so everyone knows. Oh, no, I haven't done that one yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, you know, the, my best posts by far, you know, are personal or talking about other people, yeah. appreciating people. Yep. The ones about business building, the ones about the marketplace. Mm -mm. No. People, they, they'll, lurk, they'll lurk and watch it, but yep. they're not going to comment. Yep. So I'll, I'll go back and I'll comment, you know, kind of strategically on that. I won't comment on all 10. I might comment on three or four and then kind of keep that post alive as long as possible. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So you just then, okay, you're the one that's going to go do it. Do you just time block that in your day or do you randomly when you're oh. like chilling or what? Yeah. So I'll normally do it in the evening. That's, okay. that's the time I feel, you know, six to eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Cool. So it's not like all day you're like trying to, to, to respond to anything because then that's a distraction. Got it. Um, oh, I see where you're getting at. Yeah. Distraction. No, 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 no. I'm not getting distracted. Yeah. I totally time block. So if, if I'm at the office, you know, I even time block when I look at my emails. Yeah. Right. So, cause email used to be the old Facebook, you know, where yep. you're clicking the refresh button, see if there's a new lead coming in or something important to work on. Ah. You know, and, and that's the way do that's one of the biggest struggles I think we have is like as an agent, you know, solo agent or starting a team is like not knowing what to do, like not knowing what to do when you have nothing to do. Right. Yep. It's yep. like, and that's a self starter part of it. And so what I've done is I've created some like checklists and systems, my, cause of my aviation background for the agent that like wants to work, but doesn't know what to do. And this yep. came about because I had so many agents coming to me going, Hey, Nick, what should I be doing right now? What right. should I be doing right now? Right? Like, yeah, you should be talking so, to people. Like, go talk to people. <laughs> That's what you should be doing. Go talk to people. Yeah, so, right, here, right. Here, yeah. so, right. So, let's shift, let's shift gears just a little bit. So, you were an airplane pilot. And here's the thing I didn't get this when I was younger, but the more I started to fly, going to different events, speaking at different things, whatever, we're going on vacation. Every time I walk past that cockpit, I think about Captain Soli, right, in New York that landed on the Hudson. And I'm just yeah, thinking, I cool. hope that guy is on his A game today, right? So part of being an airplane pilot, and I hope they truly are for the most part, um, part of it is having some emotional state management and some emotional awareness because you've got to make some decisions in there where a lot of people's lives depend on your decisions when you're flying the plane, right? So how is it that systems and checklists actually help you create an emotional state and an awareness that allows you to have more confidence and certainty? How has that happened for you? Okay. Well, th this is a really good question. Um, let me, let me take it back to something. Now, when I got into aviation, I thought pilots were naturals, right? They were genetic, like they were special and I wanted to be considered special, right? And what I found out was, and actually in aviation, they called it the right stuff. In order to be a pilot, you need the right stuff. Well, it turns out, you know, when I got into aviation, the level of skill was just as wide as it is in real estate, right? And through training and systems, we all got on the same level. All of them. I mean, every one of the people in my training program you know, they, we all started at different levels, but we all ended up highly, highly proficient to almost zero errors. And that was done through checklists. So you talk about emotional awareness. We call it situational awareness in aviation, okay? In order to reach, situ have a higher level of situational awareness, right? You have to have, you have to work on your skills daily, skills, right? So an airplane pilot, flying, um, you know, air, you know, lift and drag ratios, planning, all this other stuff, right? 
you then have to be number two proficient. So you have to be really good with your skills. So in, in real estate, it'd be like, you know the script, you know how to say it, but are you proficient at saying it, right? Oh yeah, I know that expired, Nick. Hey, Nick, I already know that expired. I tried it, it didn't work. Hey, you know, you got the skill, but you're not proficient at it, right? Because there's so many other layers to it, like, you know, the intuition and the, the tonality and the pacing and the what ifs and the being ahead of the person you're calling, right? So there's proficiency. And then the third one's discipline, where you have to be, you have to stick to the process, right? One, you have to know the process. Two, you stick with it, no matter what. Like you have the discipline, proficiency, the procedural discipline to stick with it, okay? Yeah. So you know what you need to do and you stick with it. You've done it a lot of times, so you're proficient and you have the skills, right? Okay, so then that takes you to a level. Now you're just at the place. Now you can be situational aware. Now you can go out and um, almost, this is like intuition, right? Like intuition doesn't come to the untrained mind. If you ever heard that one, intuition doesn't yep. come to the untrained mind. Like yep. this is the level where you can be, have intuition. Like if you get on the phone with a prospect, Colton, I know you're going to get it because like you hear things other people don't hear and you see things other people don't see. And it's because of all the years and hours and training and skills and proficiency, right? And you have the discipline to stick with it. And if you go off track, you're going to come back in and all these other things. So now a situation awareness with that, you can make good judgment calls, but you can't make good judgment calls without those, that foundation, we, the cornerstone, I call them. Now, um, if you want to dive into that, we can. Now, I will talk about emotional discipline here in aviation. Now, when you walk, this is the safest way to fly, man. And it's the safest way. No, not a way to fly. It's the safest way to travel by far. It's not even close. 86,000 flights per day in the U.S., right? How many accidents? Right? Very How few. Many, I mean, they happen, but not very many. Very few. Millions of flights a year, zero accidents. Now, in, in real estate, how many buyers and agents meet today? How many contracts were written? How many listings agreements? How many listings didn't sell? How many, how many errors were made? A lot. Lots of errors. Yeah. Yep. Guess what? And, you know, we're okay with errors in, in real estate. Why? What's the big deal? I just get another lead, another contact, you know, and you get another chance tomorrow. Yep. In aviation, you might not get another chance, right? Yep. And so we have to have this. For me, my mindset is, I have to, I have to learn from my mistakes and I have to mitigate them and be ahead of it because to me, it matters. Like uh -huh. just the way I was trained, like we got to take this shit seriously. Like, excuse my language, but like, Hey, no, they're used to it on here. It's cool. This is a calm. Oh, okay. <laughs> like your, 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 your revenue, your sales, the number of sales, your revenue, and really your profit is based on how many errors you made. So it's, it, yeah, it's about, you know, giving, you know, doing the right things, but it's also stop doing the wrong things and screwing yeah. up. Right. And, and, and doing the and right where, things at the right time and, and stop doing oh, the wrong things at the wrong time, you know, because order. how many brand new agents they get in and they don't have money, but they got a lot of time and they're trying to figure out all these Facebook ads. It's like, dude, you need to start fucking talking to people. You don't need to start trying to figure out your Facebook <laughs> algorithm. Come on, man. Let's, let's, let's yeah. do this. Yeah, you know, that's good that you start with my journey. But so to the emotional side of it, okay, when an emergency arises in an aircraft, and this is going to translate to real estate, when something goes wrong on an aircraft, what is the first thing you do? Take a deep breath. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Close. Really good. Really good. And this is taught. Don't do anything right? Don't touch anything. Don't do anything. Don't react. Right. And, yep. and that's emotional discipline to me is like, okay, mm -hmm. someone just hung up on me. Okay. I'm not going to. Are you there? Colton. Sorry. We just blanked out for a second. We got you back. You know? Okay. So when, when something goes wrong, first step, first step, don't do anything. Cause you could, you more than likely you're going to screw something up, uh -huh. right? You're going to be the problem next. So in, in real estate, same thing deals going haywire. Don't do anything, right? Someone just gave you an objection that was crazy. You don't know how to handle it. Don't overreact, which is like, I'll call you later. 
right? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, 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 I feel bad about myself, right? Like, don't react, stay calm. And that's going to give you time. You take a deep, you, you nail it, take a deep breath, look around, evaluate, continue to fly the aircraft, right? So, you know, continue to talk, continue to have the conversation, continue to work on the transaction, but don't do anything foolish or, or cause you know, our ego is going to get in the way, our emotions going to get away. Oh my gosh, I need the money. What's going to happen. You know, our mind races and we lose track of the airplane. We're not flying anymore and we need to continue to maintain control. That's part of the Tao, knowing when to not do something, right? We've almost been so oh. trained to do something, to do, to do, to do. And oftentimes it's like, yeah. wait a second, where am I at? What's going on? And just take kind of inventory of what, what, what's real and what's not real. Yeah, you know, and you know, they talk about time slowing down, right? Like when you get into flow or the zone, time slows down. And it's true, you know, experience makes stuff slow down. And so, and I, but I don't think you have to be experienced to experience time slowing down. Uh -uh. You just need to slow down. Yep. The things yeah. you can you see know, when you, the things you can see only when you slow down. One of my best, my favorite books of all time. Uh -huh. The things you can because see when you slow the, down. Here's the thing about an aircraft, right? If the aircraft is flying, it will continue to fly. Like if something goes wrong, you don't do anything, it's going to still fly. If you're on the phone call and things aren't going right, it's going to continue. You're still going to be on the phone call. You're still going to be in the transactions going sideways. It's not dead. It's still flying. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just, let's just dow it, dow it out, evaluate, it out. ask some question, ask some questions, problem solve. Right. And so, you know, if, if you don't have the skills and proficiency where you're flying and you're just worried about flying, you can't make good decisions. So as a real estate agent, it's like, you know, at all levels, you know, for me, you know, I get overwhelmed as much as I did when I was selling 13 homes. Mm -hmm. I get overwhelmed. You know, I got, you know, I got leadership problems now. I just got different problems. Experienced yep. agents and new agents have the same amount of, they make the same amount of errors for different reasons, mm -hmm. right? For different reasons, complacency, all this other stuff. And so for me now, it's like, okay. I made like yesterday, I was down, I was down and out yesterday, but it had to do with leadership. It had to do with composure. It had to do with self doubt, mm -hmm. same things, yeah. for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Here's the question. At what point, Nick, did you realize that you were never going to have a life or a business without problems? Like I, I think about earlier on in my career, it's like, if I could hustle and get to this level, I'll have no more problems. At what point did you raise? Wait a second. That's crazy. I'm always going to have problems. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know. I, I was there with you thinking, okay, if I can get to a hundred grand, if I can get to 200, if I can get to 500, like money was going to make my problems go away. If I can hire my assistant, if I can have another assistant, if I can have a transaction coordinator, now I don't have to worry about transactions. No, you, now you got to worry about a transactions and a transaction coordinator. <laughs> right you want a buyer's agent oh you don't want to work with buyers anymore guess what you still working with buyers and yep. a buyer's agent yeah right so then it's like when did i realize that probably like a year or two ago honestly you know if you you're into if you follow jordan peterson at all mm -hmm. no i jordan do peterson. Yeah. so 12 rules it's, it's one of the things where he says something along the lines of like you know if you don't do anything it's going to get worse some along the lines of that Right. So yep. I thought about it. I was like, man, I can't wait till I retire. And I'm thinking, it's not going to get any better. I'm still going to be human. Right. I'm still going to struggle. Like struggle is yep. not going to go away because I'm not working. The problem yep. will be that I'm not working. Yep. So I accepted the fact that, geez, Louise, okay, now I just, you know, I just got to work. That's part of being human. Right. I got to get better. I love when I get better. That's my goal every day just to get better, grow. And I used to want exponential growth, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're selling 12 homes or 30 homes, you want to get to 30, like 60 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But now I'm just like 1%, 0.01%. I'm cool. What's cool about like running a team, and I think you were going to ask me like why I started a team, is my goal is to grow. And when I was by myself, I could only grow my sales, my, my own sales and my own self. Mm -hmm. But now... I don't have to personally grow. I just have to grow into other people and I get the same satisfaction that I right. did when I did it myself. 
And Funny think, things happen, though. Think about this, though. Even when you were by yourself, you still had a team. You had your escrow team. You had your uh, your loan officer team. You had your clients. They were all part of your team, right? Success happens with community. You just grew your community. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you just kind of added some control either through – legal means or employment means but it wasn't really leadership necessarily yeah. like it was like the first level like you're paying them so they yeah. have to listen yeah yeah <laughs> and then you got to figure out okay well they're only going to listen for so long <laughs> yeah so you know you know it's funny thing you said about the team thing is i call it the home court advantage it's like you know i had to i remember building the escrow team is like i didn't want any escrow officer i wanted the one i wanted mm -hmm. and i wanted her or him to do all of them. Yep. Home yep. court, control, 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 control. You think Bill Belichick wants to control every aspect of the game? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He scored three points. You think he controlled that game? Three points. So, <laughs> you know, and I, this happens in real estate. And, you know, for being a part, part, I'm a pretty high D is, you know, you know, you, you close a deal and you move on and, you, you know, you kind of, uh, delegate or like you start a team you start delegating shit with and you don't yeah. know how to delegate yet yeah um you got to maintain control you can maintain control through doing it yourself delegating with a system in place probably pretty smart right mm -hmm. i'm huge on briefing and debriefing i brief and debrief everything if i hand something off to you you're gonna get briefed mm -hmm. so i say five minutes to save five hours yeah five minutes to save five hours. that's it that's it Three to five to thrive, baby. That's what I say. Three to five to And I do it with my clients too. Yep. Like, let's slow down to speed up. Okay. Yep. Let's bring take five minutes. I'm gonna brief you on what just happened or what's going to happen. Yep. So and we'll yeah, debrief so to see what went wrong. Here was here was part of my journey was um I got to where I was growing an awesome business, done awesome at business, made so much money, got great at my financials, doing financial freedom, financially free by 31. And I hit this point where I was just really, really unhappy. And um, so I call it financially free by 31, miserable by 32, right? Like that's what I tell people. <laughs> but what I found out is that I broke through this barrier and I found out how to really find what I didn't have, which is for me, truthfully, was peace and tranquility. I started observing, Nick, that there's a lot of big producers out there that they weren't experiencing this, right? Like they thought if I could grow my business big enough, then I would feel good on the inside. So talk to us about the, the personal fulfillment side along the way. Do you, do you ever feel stressed, overwhelmed? Like this is what I noticed. People were feeling anxious, so much anxiety, so much overwhelmment, so much stress. They were doing a lot of things, but they were just, they couldn't handle it. And so they would turn to, to drugs, to alcohol, to pornography, to food, to shopping, to mm -hmm. even work became a drug for a lot of people. Tell us how you dealt with that, or did you even have this as a struggle? Oh, so yes, I told you yesterday, I was down yesterday, mm -hmm. and you know it's funny. I shared I shared it with my team that I was down to some some of the closest team members and people because you know as a leader you got to show a little vulnerability, right? You can't yep. just be Superman all the time. And they're like, "I'm really you didn't show." Well, that's because I've trained myself for the last eleven years to fake it right? To pretend I yeah, yeah. put on the face and put on the state, right? But yeah. inside I'm like, crap, like I'm failing, right? And the, the funny thing is, you know, we probably sold a couple homes, you know, I have a wonderful family, all these different things. So I'll give you a couple tips. So I have a, one of my best friends has a business that sells 400 homes a year. He has a property management company, top 250 teams of the nation. We're, we have like identical businesses that we've grown up with. And uh, he owns like tons of, car he, oh, probably owns five different businesses, seven figure guy, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I called him up and I said, hey man, um, do you ever get stressed? And he goes, oh, you mean like building a $2 million building and running a 30 agent team? And I was like, oh, okay, I feel better about myself, right? Like, he goes, absolutely. He goes, you know, but, I, you know, what I used to do is I used to go, I used to, you know, have, go home, have a glass of wine, mm -hmm. relieve stress. I would he smoke goes, a joint. Now, Mine wasn't wine. It was yeah. smoking a joint. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, I guess we got permission to go here, right? So, yeah. it's like, okay, I stopped drinking June 5th, 2017. Nice. June, I know the date. 
June 5th, 2017. It was the day that I found out that we were having a girl. So I was 37 mm. years old. I'm 38 married, right? And I've always wanted to have a family, man. And it was something that was eating away at me. So no matter how much money I made, how successful I was, it was something there, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was covering it up with alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. But I was also covering up my dealing with stress through alcohol, mm -hmm. right? Very common for business people, man. Yep. And I mean, I don't remember a day I didn't have a drink after work. Yep. And June 5th, 2017 was the last time I did. And I won't, I won't have a drink again. And that's how I deal with stress. Now, here's the thing is when you deal with stress with alcohol, you got to replace it with something. Fitness. Yep. Right. I got to relieve stress. So I started working out. Right. And yep. I love it. Absolutely love it. And this is not uncommon either, either. And that's not a, that's a good habit, not a bad habit. So I'm okay yep. replacing that. Yep. Okay. So I called back to the conversation. So I, he told, he says that he goes, but you know, I can't afford the calories anymore. So I don't do that anymore. I go, okay, fair enough. He goes, so I work out. So maybe you should go work out. He goes, but you work out all the time, Nick, don't you? I go, yeah, I do. So what do you do when you don't drink? And you, you're already working out to relieve stress. And this is, this is a game changer for me, especially as a guy, but I'm not, I'm not excluding women in this too, because they probably feel the same way. He goes, I, I talk to my wife and I go, that's good. So how do I deal with it? Now I was doing what I was, I needed to do. I was calling someone and talking about it. Sounds so stupid, right? Yep. Worked. I, Three minutes on the call with him, instantly back. I was back, man. Did he say back talking with my I'm wife? Back. With my wife? Is that what he said? Yeah, he talks to his wife when he's stressed out. But 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 I had somebody I could call and talk to. Yeah. And it was just like, hey man, I'm feeling down. I'm feeling inadequate, right? As a leader, you know, there's a lot going on. And we're we're killing it, right? But it's like I feel bad about it. Like no matter how I know people that do 800 homes, a thousand homes feel the same way. They feel yeah. the same way. So the key to me from that yesterday, and I know it is you got to have somebody you can just call because within two minutes, I was back today. I'm having the best day I've had in a long time. So it's kind of funny. You had, you can kind of have that down and then you have the high. Yep. And so, so I hope that helps, man. Yeah, I think it, it, to me, it's one of the most important conversations to have because it's almost not talked about. And there's so many people, I can't tell you how many, Nick, when I started sharing my story more and more, I have people reaching out to me all the time. Hey, listen, dude, I'm taking three to five Oxycontin a day just to deal with things. I'm like, dude, that sucks. I get it. <laughs> you know, like that sucks. And um, here's what I found. My, my drug of choice now is breath. I will just do five to 10 minutes of breath work when I'm stressed. I'll, I'll, I'll literally just put my phone down, walk outside and just go breathe. And it feels so good because I get so present. I'll, I'll, I'll do an hour breath work in the morning. Like my first three hours of the day is just working on me. And the first 45 minutes to an hour is either doing meditation, Tai Chi or breath work. And I've got to the point now where I get so high of my own oxygen and my own supply. I don't need the other stuff. I can be here. Well, that, there's no doubt. There's, so I've, I've meditated before and I'm, you know, there's this, I'm part owner of a company and the CEO meditates and, and that's just been absolutely incredible for her. You know, I cycle in the morning. So my goal is to ride in a professional mountain bike race by the time I'm 40. I don't know. I just came up with that. I wanted to go pro my whole life. I want to be a pro athlete, right? Well, I figured out in mountain biking, they have age classifications. So the older <laughs> I get, the better chance I have. <laughs> so, so, dude, so my goal is to write in a pro classify so they have one two and three so that's why so every morning i get up in the morning not every morning because i have a coach because you don't want to overtrain. Mm -hmm. but I, I rode my bike for an hour and 15 minutes this morning and to to relate to what you said i was breathing mm -hmm. like i had to breathe and so it was a form of meditation because that yeah. oxygen that i the amount of oxygen that i brought into my system um I'm not worn out. It actually energized me throughout the day, right? It's like you yeah. think I'd be walked down. Right. One With thing I realized too about on the I was gonna say about breath, Nick. One of the things. Don't did I lose it? You froze on me. 
Did anyone else? Oh, there he is. You're back. Okay. So one of the things that's really interesting when like if it's ta- like runners, they get into a runner's high, like they get into a meta state while they're running. Like it sounds like you do on your bike as well. The way the body works is you start to take the deep breaths of oxygen in and as you're exhaling, you're not letting all the carbon dioxide out. And so what happens is, is your veins get really, really big. So you can pump the red blood cells through your body even more. And it just oxygenates your body. It's the most amazing scientific experience and nick is frozen again anyone else frozen oh wait just just you just nick can you hear me we can hear you definitely we can hear you yeah oh yeah yeah okay there we are so yeah (laughs) what were we talking about Yeah, yeah oxygen yep oxygen so what happened i was saying what i was telling them is when when you take those deep breaths in and you're letting it out, but you're not letting the whole thing out because you're getting onto the next breath so quickly, you're keeping an amount of carbon dioxide in your body that keeps your your blood vessels, your veins will open up wider. So more red blood vessels or blood blood cells, more oxygen can pump through your veins. And and so when you get that, it just puts more oxygen in all part of your body. That's where you get energy from. You know, one one hack too, I can add to this through my training, uh, my mountain biking training, um and this is intense stuff man so it's like hydration Mm -hmm. right you talk about breath you need to go to hydration right there you go do it so i didn't realize how dehydrated i was my entire life Mm. my entire pro life like not pro life my entire um athletic life growing up and my entire business life dehydrated right And how much of an impact it makes on my cognitive function, my ability to think and focus, you know, now I, cause like when, when you ride for three hours, right. You can start tell, you can have this physio, you can actually tell when you're dehydrated and your performance will drop. I've started to translate that into my business where it's like my decision-making ability is going down and I'm aware of it. And I can, I can trace it to water and I just drink more water. The other thing is electrolytes and actually having the electrolytes and retaining the water was a problem for me. So um, there's a cup, there's a, I don't know what you're drinking. It's probably awesome for electrolytes, but it's like scratch. So it's a company called scratch, right? There's noons and different things like that. If people want to perform on a high level, and I know you have high performers out there is I'm telling you, get some scratch and drink one of those a day. If you're also working out, and you're going to have a, you're going to be able to perform throughout the day much, much better. Cause I, I always wondered, it's like, you know, how does, you know, Richard Branson and like, you know, Mark Cuban, how they do this, like, holy crap, how they run billion dollar companies, like 12 businesses, you know, they, they, they worked on their mind and their body and, you know, to the airline space back to situational awareness. Cause I think there's huge translations here, at least for me being on your podcast is part of situational awareness is your physiology. Uh-huh. being aware of your state and pilots have this nailed right so and they're willing to they're willing and open to call out anybody uh-huh. right so i'll give you an example one of the biggest killers in, in aviation is being tired exhausted right so raise your hand if you've ever been exhausted in real estate drop a yes yeah. down below if you've ever been tired yeah, in real estate yeah. exhausted. You ever been exhausted or tired or fatigued Right? Did you stay up too late? Did you have too many drink? Want too, want too many drinks? Right? Things like that. In aviation, during the briefing, you have to disclose if you're fatigued and why. Right? Mm, like, thank you for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big deal, right? Yeah. It makes a huge difference. I'll give you an example. Like I was flying from Hong Kong to Paris. Okay. International freight. This is the next level, knowing that you're going to be tired later. So it's one, do you know you're tired now, fatigued now, and how to handle that? Number two, acknowledging when you will be tired in the future and what you're going to do about it, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're taking off from Hong Kong. I learned this from a captain, Captain McLeod, one of the greatest captains ever flew with. And we're sitting there on the tarmac, and it's a 12-hour flight. So we've already been up for four hours, and we have a 12-hour flight. We're going to be landing in Paris when it's morning. When everyone else is jacked up on coffee, we're going to be landing. Tired as shit. He goes, he goes, 
hey, everyone, I want you guys to know when we fly into Paris, we're going to be tired. We're going to be fatigued. So what does that mean? Right? That means we need to be more on our game. We need to be hyper-focused. We need to be more disciplined. We, need, we can't skip any steps because we're more likely to make mistakes, right? Things like that. And he goes, when, we get, when, I, when I ask you for the before landing checklist, that's going to be a trigger, guys. That means we're tired, but it's going to be a trigger and we're going to wake up and we're going to be focused. Shh. Unbelievable things happen. 11 hours later, we pull out that checklist and we go from like this to like ready to go, game time. We come into like the hottest airspace ever, like airplanes everywhere. Things are coming at us a million miles an hour because European airspace is dense, man. I don't, it's hard to explain over this, but it's dense. It's like, it's like the day of closing and your buyer's calling you, the listing agent's calling you and your wife's calling you to get home and, and you know, your creditors are calling you. It's like all that, right? So, you yeah. know, that's kind of the thing. So I don't know. I guess the principle here is one, no, I have agents that the bet, when's the best time to call people? Right. When's the best time to be call people? Probably I'd in, say the, in the morning now. Morning? Well, technically, okay, what's the system? Te technically, like if you look at logistics, probably evening, they're home. Right. But in the morning, I get it done. Like I get it out of the way okay. and they've got way more energy. Exactly. That's why. Right. So. Are you there. OK, so yep. that that's the key. Right. So statistically it's in the evening but statistically you're going to be off your game right yeah but if you acknowledge it and you prepare for it, you're going to be i can tell you you can change you know you you've studied some of this stuff right you can change your state and yeah. you can be prepared and yeah. um that captain was brilliant at that because he could not only change his state you could get other people to do it through triggers right when i do this i will snap out right i was like mm -hmm. you know i was like 25 i was like Damn, I've never been a part of anything so crazy. That was so awesome. So, <laughs> so cool, man. I could talk about this uh, so much longer. Like, I, I truly believe, like, if we want to change our results, we've got to change our story. In order to change our story, we've got to change our state, physiology, focus, and thoughts, and our words. And we have to consciously do that because unconsciously, we're already programmed. We can't wait for unconscious mind to do it. We have to program the conscious. We have to consciously program that unconscious to shift our state, to change our story, to get into action, to create our life. You think about this real estate or insurance or any other business, you, you, we don't put the same weight as being an airplane pilot on it because we don't feel like it's a life and death situation. But the truth is it is life or death. This is your one fucking life. What are you gonna do? Are you just gonna play average because, oh, it's not that important right now? Or are you gonna get to the end of your life and be like, man, I wish I would have made a little bit different decision. And, and the other thing I could add to that is we don't put enough value on our profession, right? So I, and I know this, I came from aviation. And I was like embarrassed to be in real estate because anyone could be in real estate. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, oh, you know, I don't have to take myself that seriously because everyone else does it. Until I realized, I, I don't know where it was, like 50 or 60 transactions or something. And I realized, holy cow, the people I get to meet, mm -hmm. the things I have to know, the skill level to go to the next level, like there's some elite people, man, amazing, amazing people. And everyone listening to this, you're one of them because you're learning, right? And you're capable of it. There's, there's no limit to where you guys can go in real estate. I truly believe it. I've, I've seen, I've, I've had agents that are 19 years old end up selling 50, 60 homes, right? 20, I don't, and your story, right? You, it, it's all within us, right? We just have to choose to do it. And it comes to consistency, you know, discipline, like the basics. It truly is the basics because if you're doing something negative in your life, right? Negative habits, negative um, routines. It's showing up somewhere else in your life. If, mm -hmm. if something's showing up in one place, it's showing up in another, right? Yep. And that's yeah. the bad thing about negative activities. But the positive is if you're doing something positive, it's going to show up in other areas of your life. Yep. You know, I was talking to my agent and they're, my agents, one of my agents is starting to work out. I'm like, that's great. You know why? because that's going to show up in other places in your life. You're showing up every day in the morning. It's going to show, you're going to show up for your clients now. I go, your sales are going to double because you're going to, you're showing up now, yep. right? He's going, to, he's going to run a marathon. I go, you, you understand, you ever had this, I have an agent that's going to run a marathon. I go, when's the last time you had a goal outside of business? Since high school. Couldn't name Jeez. it. 
right? So like, think about that. People listening is like, when, what goals do you have outside of business? You know, yeah. you have sales goals, hopefully, right? Yeah. But he has a goal outside of business that's going to show up in his business. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you must be like Eastern meta Eastern philosophies, right? Like that's the op, you got to look in the opposite here. Basically even like, you know, opposites the way kind of stoicism like yeah, you know yeah. you want to make you want to grow your sales start looking at your personal life yep 100 percent. dude we could talk about this for hours i've got to go to my next appointment i want to appreciate you being here nick where can these guys where, where can they get to know you a little bit more yeah so the easiest place is just a find me on facebook friend request me there's also um real estate greatness so i have i do some some business building tips it's just all free content that i do for my local brokers in the area to help them train them. So real estate greatness, Nick McLean, you can find me on Instagram, Nick McLean RE. So I'm always available. Hit me up. You have questions. You know, it's all about abundance and giving. So that's why I came on no agenda. So, you know, cool, man. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad you found us. Glad you reached out to us. Glad we got this is one of my favorite conversations in a long time. So it's funny. I get on these podcasts and some of them, I just can't wait to get off. And some of them, I'm just like, Dude, I want to keep going. Like I'm learning so much. I'm feeling the energy. Like this is a great conversation. This was one of those today, you know. So I appreciate you being here. I wish you guys the best of luck out there, and uh, let me know how much we can support you. All right. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm all I'm all here for you, you and your audience. So if you ever need me again, let me know. Cool. Thanks. We'll see you, Nick. See ya. Awesome game for you guys that are watching. Go to www.thewgrmastermind.com. We're taking applications now, helping people grow their business, their financial freedom, and their personal fulfillment. A lot of these things we talked about today, it's all running systems, operating systems inside of your mind and your body so that you can unleash your fucking soul and live life on your terms. Now, I want to be very, very open with the disclaimer. It's easy to make money. It's easy to create financial freedom. So fucking simple to do that. What has been the biggest challenge for me and is now so easy is to create a life full of joy and peace and tranquility and enthusiasm and excitement. And this is where I'm super passionate about. I want to make a difference for you guys. So if you guys want to make more money, go apply. If you guys want to grow financial freedom, go apply. If you want to do all that and you want to fall in love with the process and you want to enjoy your life to the fullest, definitely go apply. And if you haven't already checked out Fearless Agent, go to fearlessagent.com. We'll see you later. .com. We'll see you later.